you're welcome to the Nigeria Ombudsman channel and it's a pleasure to have you here once again. I've missed you guys. It's been about four months since I made my last video and uh, I know that some of you might have thought, oh, this guy have uh, run out of steam, but <laughs> you know uh, the challenges um, of living abroad, the different responsibilities that are there. And I think that was the reason why I needed to um, take a break. Um, I can never give up. Of, I can never give up on Nigeria. That is not possible. Nigeria is always here. I might be far, far away from Nigeria, but my heart is always close to Nigeria. I love Nigeria. Wherever I may be, Nigeria will always be very dear to my heart because I know what God has given us and where we could have been as a nation if only we get leadership right. So that's the reason why I will continue um, to speak about Nigeria because I desire the best for uh, my country and I desire the best for the people um, who are there because God has given us so much um, as a nation for us to be where we are uh, uh, presently because ni if Nigeria gets things right, others will get um, it right also. I want to begin by congratulating the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Um, you ladies did a wonderful job uh, in your last match with Australia. Even in front of their home crowd, you were able to pull a 3-2 victory. And I think that was um, very, very, that is very, very commendable. But I think that going forward, there are things that you, you ladies need to think about because you were playing so much um, on the defensive when even having the advantage, I believe that you, you had the opportunity um, to have scored more goals, but um, you guys had to concentrate so much on, on the defense. And that was the reason why Australia was able to get the second goal, actually. So going forward, I think that you guys should put in more firepower so that you can get more, you can score more goals and so that the margin even will be, uh, will be more for you so that you don't have to be under tension. But I just want to say once again that um, congratulations going forward. I wish you the best uh, and I hope that you are able to come out tops in this competition so that we can have cause to celebrate uh, looking at the different challenges our country has been through um, so far. The two main issues I'll be looking at during this um, particular video is the issue of the directors of state security service uh, personnel and their misbehavior at the high court on, on Tuesday the 25th. And then the issue of the Dangote refinery hiring 11,000 Indians and to come and work with them. <laughs> on the first one, I'll say that the DSS personnel um, having to put up such a performance at the high court was very, very disgraceful. Uh, and I'll say that it's an international embarrassment because we see, um, we, could, we, can, we could see different international news channels carry that particular story because the DSS is supposed to be the best of the best in terms of security personnel because they are the ones who are supposed to uh, be very much ahead in terms of ensuring uh, the, uh, the security of our country. But over the years, we have come to see the DSS being drawn into the, the mess of the political class. They have become an instrument which the political class now use to settle their skulls with their opponents or those people they do not like. We saw how they handled the case with uh, Omar Leshoware. We saw the standoff um, during, the t during the time, um, on one of the times that um, Buhari was away when uh, Oshibanjo had to step in to settle that particular standoff. I think it was at the Senate or, or House of Reps. I cannot remember which of them. But before Oshibanjo stepped in to give an order, the, what they did at the High Court, overseen by Jonathan and uh, Justice Jonathan Owebo, I would say was very disgraceful. Justice Jonathan Owebo had already given. Uh, the uh, he had already given this verdict uh, in terms of the bill application that 
Emefile um, should be granted bail. That is, Emefile is the, cent the former central bank governor. Um, the after the, after Buhari left office, as soon as Bola Ametinubu came in, he was arrested and he had been in detention for over um, over forty days, which is against the law. And he went. The, the lawyer went to secure a bill um, from this particular high court. And the bill was granted with 20 million um, stipulated as the, what the money needed to deposit. And I believe that even right there, the court with um, MFLA's um, connections will have been able to have fulfilled the bill conditions. And the DSS knew that. And so Justice Owebo um, declared that if he could not fulfill the bill conditions, then the personnel of the Nigerian. Uh, Correctional services that is Nigerian prison, former Nigerian prisons should take him to custody pending when he could fulfill the bail conditions. But the DSS, in a guest up in a guest up style, um, acting like as if they were um, street urchins and hoodlums, came in and barricaded barricaded the the the, the court, stopping the um, the Nigerian correctional service personnel from taking in. Uh, MFLA. And it was very, very sad seeing that these people were in contention with, with the, the, the prison's um, personnel for well over two hours, even going to the extent of tearing the uniform of an officer of the National um, Nigerian Correctional Services. I would say that we have never had it this bad. Um, Everything, everyone just seems to do whatever he or she wants to do. And to hear that uh, they were acting on orders from above. Who was the so-called person from above? When did anyone become more than the law in Nigeria? This is, this is the state that the pol politicians have brought Nigeria into, um, where there's no respect for the law, where everyone just do whatever he or she wants to do. And it's very sad and sickening to imagine that uh, the Bola Ametinubu uh, government will begin their administration this way. And to even imagine that it's an Ill, in, a, in my own opinion, it's an illegitimate government that got in there through rigging. And, and to imagine that it will start its, its work this way is very, very shameful. We know that. This whole issue with Emefile is beyond uh, finding a gun in his house. We know that it's beyond that because uh, I'm not supporting the fact that he had a gun that was unlicensed in his possession at home when his house was searched. Everyone who has a gun must um, have a license. But this is not the case. Um, this, this is... Uh, I would say that that is not the reason why this case is so hot. The reason, because in my own opinion, based on the noise that they, based on the noise that they made uh, about Emefile, I thought that oh, there were charges going to be made um, concerning um, um, abuse of office, um, looting of funds from of, while he was in office, and all that. But those never came up because they knew that if Emefile opened their mouth, many of them will be part of the problem because Emefile distributed monies to them. And so that is why they just basically moved away from that and then want to concentrate on the issue of a gun being found in his possession. And having a gun in his possession is a billable offense. And that was the reason why Justice Owebo gave him um, that leeway for him to um, fulfill, um, to put down 20 million as his as, he, as an shorty and standing on his behalf for him to be able to get his, uh, his bill. But the DSS acting on the orders of the so-called authorities from above uh, frustrated that. And it's very, very shameful. It's very, very sad. The, the, our justice system has become a point of mockery because those in most, many of those in the legal profession have 
ended up in an unwholesome romance with the political class of Nigeria. We, we saw, I think about a month ago or two months ago, when a senator whose wife is a justice made a comment that he had influenced cases concerning politicians. So if those in the legal profession who are supposed to uphold the law of Nigeria have now reduced themselves to these unwholesome relationships with these dirty politicians of Nigeria, then why do we not expect to see this kind of ugly incidents like we saw at the High Court on Tuesday with the DSS and uh, the intimidation of the uh, prison, um, prison service personnel? I, I would say that the judiciary should wake up. The judiciary should stand up and clean his house. That is one of the ways they can begin to earn respect. And that is the way that they can begin to facilitate sanity in our country because things have become really, really ugly and embarrassing, much more than even before. The second point I want to speak about has to do with the, um, the Dangote refinery recruiting 11,000 workers from uh, India. I, first, I want to begin by saying that I do not have any problem with uh, employers employing workers from abroad. I live abroad, I work abroad. So, but for in every country, the policy for, for countries all over the world is that they put their nationals first. And it's when they cannot get people to fill a position, that's when they go for people abroad. Nigeria has over 19% unemployment rate, which is terrible. And how can we now, how can the Dangote refinery now say, because they could not get qualified um, um, skill, people with qualified skill set from within Nigeria, that's when they now went to hire people from abroad. The Dangote refinery was not something that was conceived overnight. It has been on the pipeline for years. So I would have expected that if the, uh, the Dangote refinery really had interest in employing the local workforce, it would have collaborated with the government, whether of the different states or at the federal level, to say these are the things, these are the kind of workers we are going to need to work here. And so within now and the next four or three years, let us prepare people within our country. Let's 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 train them. Let's collaborate and train these people within a space of three to four years so that at the end we will employ them and they can work with us. But that was never done. And because I believe that Nigerians are intelligent, Nigerians are Nigerians are hardworking, and that's why you will see Nigerians when they go abroad, they make a difference because they have been given the right environment to thrive. But we can see here that the Nigerian youth, what they have right now is double jeopardy. Many of them have been to school and they are saying now that they don't have the appropriate skill set um, to work at the refinery. Many of those who have gone abroad are still the children of those who have politicians who have looted the funds of Nigeria. And so the Nigerian youth, I would say that are faced with double jeopardy. They have studied at home, but now they are saying many of them are not employable because they do not have the right skill set. Why can you not employ them, put them on that training to enable them to get the required skill set that you want to be able to fulfill the task you have for them? But you are saying they are not unemployable. But coming again to technical education, that is another area where the political class of Nigeria have failed seriously and woefully. In the past, we used to have technical colleges all across Nigeria. But now many of those colleges have died. And for, for us to think about, talk about development, for us to talk about technological advancement, we need to develop 
our technical education. We don't, we don't have to focus only on academics because that is just the focus of our universities. We need to return back to technical education. We need to revive our, our, our technical colleges because that is where you are going to train those people who are going to be the drivers of the technology development that we want as a country. The development of infrastructure, these are the people who are going to be needed to move these things forward. And if we don't do that, it's going to be a hard task. So to the government of Nigeria, to the politicians who are just running around like um, a bull in the China shop, who have been blinded by their greed, I, would, I just want you guys to just wake up because you people talk about moving Nigeria forward. Without things like this, all your talk will basically amount to nothing. So for you to move Nigeria forward, you need to challenge the youth, the, the, the massive youth of Nigeria. Give them the right environment and the opportunity to develop and hone their skills so that they are able to uh, grab any job that's out there. I want to thank you guys for watching uh, today's uh, video and I want, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. But please stay safe and continue to pray for our country, Nigeria, and many other countries that are dealing with leadership challenges. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. May God bless you.